Hey guys, welcome back to my sewing room. In today's DIY wedding dress video, I will be showing you guys the crepe dress that I posted on my community tab that so many of you guys responded to, and I'm really glad you guys did. Uh, if you guys missed the first video on how I made this wedding dress pattern, I will link it above here, and let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to start by showing you guys uh, how I cut out my skirt. Now, if you guys are familiar with my channel, you know I cut my skirts out like this all the time and I actually have a detailed video showing you guys how I do that. So I will link that above here as well. Here I have all of my pieces cut out. I have my cap sleeve, my center mesh, and my back piece cut out of tulle. And then I have my two front pieces cut out of um, crepe as well as fusible interfacing. Now for the fusible interfacing, I went ahead and extended it nine centimeters past uh, the waistline so i used the skirt pattern to aid in shaping that and we're going to go ahead and fuse that onto our lining pieces but we're going to do that in just a little bit i'm going to go ahead and start constructing the outer layer first and i'm just showing you guys here that i measured down nine centimeters from my waistline to extend down the fusible interfacing and then I'm also going to show you guys how to do uh, a cup kind of structure for a dress that doesn't need a lot of structure. So this is for a bride who doesn't have a really big bust. So I'm going to go ahead and measure from my apex to the side of where I'm, I want my cut piece to end. And then I'm going to measure from my apex to my under bust and mark there as well. And then from my apex to where I want the top of the cup to start. Now I'm going to go ahead and match my cut my notch there so that I know um, that I'm measuring from the right place. So then I'm going to mark my apex for my underbucks again, and then my apex to the the kind of the front of my bust. Not, well, not really the front, the center of my bust, I should say. And then I'm also going to go ahead and measure from the apex to the top. And I'm going to mark all of those markings, and those are going to help me um, determine where. Uh, where I should pl not only place my cups, but what shape they should be. And I'm gonna go ahead and trace those out into fusible interfacing and cut them out and then fuse them onto the lining pieces. I also decided at this point to go ahead and underline my uh, outer bodice just because I felt like this crepe was a little bit uh, translucent and I wanted to go ahead and beef it up a little bit. So I grabbed some white cotton muslin. I'm going to go ahead and underline just my uh, bodice pieces for the outer layer. Now I have a detailed tutorial on how to underline. So if you guys are interested in learning how to underline, go ahead and check that out and I will link that here above. Okay, so I have all my underlining done. Now I'm going to go ahead and pin together my princess seams. Oh my god, I sound like Squidward, y'all. <laughs> I'm getting the cold that my kids had last week. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pin down the princess seams of um, my outer bodice. And I'm going to go ahead and sew that together. Now, when I'm sewing it together, I'm making sure... Uh, when I'm pinning it together, I'm making sure to match all of my notches. And then I'm just going to evenly distribute uh, some of that extra fabric um, in between the notches because there's going to be a little bit easing here. One piece is a little bit more curved than the other or a lot more cur uh, curved than the other. So there's going to be some easing required. Um, but just go ahead and use a lot of pins if you need to. I use a lot of pins for this kind of uh, situation. And then when I take it over to my sewing machine, I make sure to sew it uh, with the the, uh, the piece that has the most curve that side up. So I sew it that way because if you sew it with the flat side up or the piece that is flatter with that side up, you will have a flatter uh, princess seam and obviously you need as much curve as you can get because it's going over the bust area. So make sure to sew, make sure to sew with the curved side up and you will be good. Ok, 
Okay, so I sewn down the princess seam. Now I'm gonna go ahead and snip into my uh, seam allowance just so that lays nice and flat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take it over to my ironing table and I wanna press it using my tailor's ham to make sure that my curve is nice and curvy. Is that the right word to say it? Nice and curvy? Anyway, here it is, nice and pressed. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, add my illusion mesh panel into the middle so i'm just matching it edge to edge and i'm going to pin it uh well actually i don't even think i pinned this one i think i just pinned there at the top and then just put it in my machine and sewed it <laughs> but yeah i'm going to go ahead and uh, sew that with a one centimeter seam allowance and i'm going to sew it down obviously on both sides Now I'm going to assemble my skirts. So I'm doing the front skirt here. I'm sewing them down the princess seams. And then I'm going to sew the center back seam on my back skirt before I sew the princess seams. And then obviously you want to take everything uh, to your ironing table and press all your seams open and uh, give your... Uh, skirt pieces like a rough press uh, you don't want to press it too much because you're going to keep working with it it's going to get wrinkled anyway but you still want to give it the initial press and then you'll steam it when the dress is all finished and i'm also going to go ahead and attach my bodice to my skirt this is the front and this is the outer layer um, i'm going to go ahead and match my princess seams and then uh, match the outside so the side seam and then match the middle and i just like to uh, kind of pin from the princess seams and go outwards and then come back in just to make sure that everything is evenly distributed and i'm going to sew that together with the one centimeter seam allowance and then after this i sewed the uh the back of the skirt now this is you know most of my videos are how how to's but this really was like let's experiment together <laughs> because even though this dress is really turning out really nicely um it took a lot of brain power to figure out how to construct this dress even though it's really simple um so the way i constructed it was a little bit unorthodox because i was experimenting pretty much but now that i know how to uh create this style of dress and the order everything should be done in i'm golden for the next time i need to really make it so i will uh, add in the description box um the order you should take to go ahead and construct this dress but i still recommend that you watch this video to the end because uh, all the steps are here they're just kind of all over the place so i apologize about that y'all but it's like my brain right now all over the place Okay, so you guys know how I do. Once you have your front assembled and your back assembled, do you wanna go ahead and uh, put it onto your dress form or at this point you have a fitting with your bride to make sure that the side seams actually meet and that the dress actually fits. And here I decided I wanted to do a little dip down at the back instead of having it straight across because I feel like all of my dresses lately are just straight across. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut down a little bit. Now notice that I cut one side and then I'm using the side uh, that I've already cut off to uh, as, a, well, as a template to cut the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to make sure, y'all wanna make sure that you cut your lining the same way because I accidentally forgot to cut my lining. And then I sew my lining onto the back as what as is and it was just, I was like, why is it not working? Why does it look like this? And then I realized I had to take the whole skirt apart, y'all. The whole skirt apart to sew it back right and we have time for a little dance break and her birthday is tomorrow guys so wish her a happy birthday down in the comments okay so now i'm going to take my pattern piece that we used to cut the mesh part of the back and i'm and then i'm going to take that little piece that we cut off of the skirt and i'm going to combine those to create uh, one pattern piece uh, and i have to recut my mesh piece since we added a little dip to the bottom there. And now that I have my new mesh piece cut out, at this point, I actually um, kind of eyeballed where a centimeter seam allowance would be. And then I cut that 
even kind of like that you follow my fingers there and then i'm going to go ahead and sew together the back to the the mesh back to the back of the skirt so i mean it's just simple you just match the side seam and then go down um, and match it to the the center back and then just kind of even it out ease the fabric in because obviously the mesh is cut from a stretch uh, pattern and the skirts is cut from a woven pattern so there's going to be some easing to be done but don't worry it all works out because it lays uh, really flat and tight on the body once it's actually wearing once it's actually on the person so go ahead and do that and then sew it together with a one centimeter seam allowance Okay, now it's time to do the closures. So I took my uh, button loops and I put them facing the side seam. And you want to take like a tracing paper or some kind of uh, paper that you can kind of see through to sew on these button loops because I'm going to tell you, your sewing machine is not going to like it. And in the end, I actually just uh, sewed them on by hand. So you might want to do that to save yourself a headache. But I sewed it on the, um, on the mesh panel. And then I'm still using the same strip of, uh, uh, I'm still using the same strip of button loop. And I'm just going to go ahead and sew it where you would sew the zipper as well. And I'm sewing this right at the one centimeter line. That's important. So make sure that you're sewing this right at the one centimeter line where you drafted your seam allowance for. And I actually really, y'all, I do not like this brand of uh, button loops. I got it on Etsy. They have like this cotton thing that just disintegrates like when you cut it. So I'm not sure I'm not sure how they thought people were going to go ahead and use it because it just falls apart. And I do not recommend it at all. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and have to find another brand of button loops that are better and a little bit more inconspicuous because these ones are kind of bulky too. So I would not re recommend these guys. I'm not even going to add their crap at the um in my description box but this is what it looks like once you have it sewn on and you just want to rip off the paper and then you want to make sure to uh, clip down all of your extra threads and in the end like i told you guys i kind of remade the whole back of the dress so i took all of this crap out um I took all of this crap out and I just put a little bit of it at the top of the illusion mesh part and I just put my zipper back there. But anyway, I'm taking my zipper and I'm putting the zipper a little bit um, before the one centimeter seam allowance and I'm going to go ahead and sew it down. Now you want it to be not at one centimeter, you want it to be less because you want it to zip and it's still to be a little bit loose and then the buttons are what brings it over to the one centimeter and closes it tightly over the body. So that is... Um, that's how I figured out how to do the, the zipper over button method. If you guys uh, sew bridal or do alterations and you've seen it done different, let me know down in the comment section. I'm interested in knowing uh, how other, uh, how, well, more mainstream and professional brands do this button over uh, zipper method. But this is how I figured out how to do it. And on the other side, you just sew the zipper in uh, the, the normal way. Okay, so here's my lining all finished all fused together and everything i sewed the waistline seam of all of my pieces so like the side front piece to the to the matching side front piece on the skirt and vice versa in the the center front piece as well and then i fused that piece that we cut out earlier i fused that on there to cover the waistline seam and also fused on that cut piece that we did earlier and this is what it looks like when you sew the princess seams it creates a perfect cup and it look at that it helps it stand out and that's without any boning y'all 
Uh, so, well, obviously, I, I would only recommend this for someone who has a smaller chest. This is not for your D cup ladies. You need uh, underwire and some push up cups in there if you have a, a bigger bust. But this works perfectly for someone with a smaller chest and who uh, wants a dress that's not really heavy, that doesn't have uh, boning in it or anything. So it can be really comfortable for like their beach wedding or their boho style wedding. I think that'll be perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and line my dress. And notice that I'm lining it in pieces. This is totally different than what I usually do. Um, I'm lining it, I'm lining the front and I'm lining the back separately. And then I'm going to combine all the side seams a little bit later on. It's still going to be clean finished on the inside. You won't see any seam allowance or anything. But um, I'm doing it this way because I think it'll be easier. So I'm going to go ahead and pin to the top of the strap area. Then I'm flipping the whole dress onto the inside. And then I'm making sure to put right side of my lining onto the right side of the seam allowance of the face. And that's going to go ahead and help me not only clean finish the inside and clean finish the outside. But it gives me a fully lined dress. And this dress really turned into a puzzle for me. It was a puzzle, especially after I had done this and then I had to do the the side seams as well. It was a real puzzle, but it turns out that you don't see any raw edges. You don't see any seam allowances or anything. Everything is encased into the lining and I think it's absolutely perfect. So if you have the patience for it, I would suggest you go ahead and go for it. Okay, so this is what it looks like once everything is lined. I still have to address that little bottom piece there. But uh, all in all, this is what it looks like. And then we're going to go ahead and under um, understitch down the seam allowance to our lining layer so that we have a clean finish. Now, this is how, excuse me, y'all, my baby's recording for me. So if she gives y'all a seizure, I'm not responsible. But <laughs> anyway, this is what it looks like to underline. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that fabric and pull it, making sure that the seam allowance is, is underneath where the lining is. And I'm just going to go ahead and stitch that down. And this is what it looks like. And I just wanted to show you guys the importance of understitching. So on one side, I have it understitched here. And on the other side, it's not. And can you notice the difference? I know you can tell the difference. It is, you have to understitch. Now, excuse the way I look, y'all, and I look the same right now, and I sound horrible, but it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and put on the little uh, waistband piece. I just sewed um, a little tube, turned it out, and pressed it flat, and now I am putting it at my waistline, and I'm going to go ahead and pin it all around, and I'm going to hand sew it down. So what I did was um, some little tiny slip stitches, tiny invisible slip stitches on the top and on the bottom of it. I have it crooked here. Don't mind it. It ain't crooked now. Um, but yeah, I slip stitched it on and I think that it's just, it just made the look. Look at my baby back there thinking she's sewing. Anyway, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm showing you guys here um, how I uh, decided to go ahead and pin it. And I have a little blood stain there, but it's okay. Uh, this is a sample dress. Obviously, if it, was, if it was for a client, I would recut it. I say, I think I say that every tutorial. There's something that goes wrong every time. But, you know, I can't. This was a kind of $50 challenge dress. So I didn't want to go back out and buy more fabric and start over. So um, obviously, like I said, if this was a client dress, I would have recut that side bodice piece and it would have been good. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and just put my waistband on. Like I said, I did tiny slip stitches on both on the top and the bottom of it. Uh, the stitches are, uh, the stitches were invisible, so you cannot see them. And then also I was thinking about doing some beading on it but then i thought that it would look better if it was just really simple uh, but that can always be done at a later time if i want to add some beading to it and here is where it gets interesting because i took apart the whole back of the dress some of the front and i'm going to go ahead and repattern some of these pieces so here um, i just have a random piece of scrap paper and a pen or a tracing paper and i'm going to trace out my uh 
my waistline down to where the curve of the skirt is and all the way around i'm just gonna go ahead and trace that out and then i'll show you what i'm gonna do with it in just a bit okay so i took that new little pattern piece and i added it to the existing pattern piece that we already have for the back and then i changed the slope of the back as well so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna go ahead and cut along that line and recut my back out i'm also going to add a gusset shape here to my top of the bodice and that's going to be uh, done in mesh as well I did that because I didn't account for underlining and interfacing my fabric, so I didn't have enough ease to meet my side seam. So I did all of that, and then here we are now. Um, and I'm going to pin my um, front to my back and sew down the side seams. Now I'm making sure that I'm only uh, pinning my face right now. So I'm only pinning my face to the um, so the mesh piece and i'm just going to pin all the way down now you want to make sure to match your waistlines here and then you want to pin all the way down just catching your face layers so you want to move your lining layers out of the way and then you want to sew that together with a one centimeter seam allowance okay so once you have that seam sewn now it's time to clean finish this side of the bodice so remember we're just working on one side so i'm going to go ahead and tuck the whole other side of the dress inwards and i'm going to make sure that my lining meets my face piece at the side seam and then i'm going to pin it all the way down now when i'm pinning it all the way down i'm making sure to match my waistline seam and then once i get past the waist i'm going to go ahead and sew my um the lining the lining skirt to the other side of the lining skirt here at the side i hope that makes sense like i said y'all this was a puzzle but uh on the next part of this um, video which hopefully will be out by Friday I don't want to make promises and not deliver but I'm almost done with this dress I didn't want to keep you guys waiting any longer uh, so that will show this process in a little bit more detail because I did it off camera here because I want to make sure I did it right but I still have the whole other side to do so you guys will see that one on camera uh, when that video uh, comes out which should be Friday fingers crossed we'll see because I need to get this dress finished so uh yeah if you guys have any questions make sure to leave them down in the comment section below um this dress was a big headache but it was also um also one of my favorite dresses um that i've made so i'm really excited to go ahead and finish this dress up thank you guys so much for watching this video if you like this videos check out some of my other videos and i'll see you in my next one